Inshallah, bi'ithnillah, bi'ithnillah, bi'ithnillah. Today we're starting just number eight. And without, uh, you know, let's start, inshallah. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولو أننا نزلنا عليهم الملائكة and if we had sent down because you know uh, just to refresh your memory the uh, Quraysh were asking the Prophet for other miracles we want to see more miracles right and this time because the Prophet was the last Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa taala had decided no more miracles right and Allah subhanahu wa taala had told the Prophet that if you want to show them more miracles then go deep into the earth and bring it for them yourself or go to the sky and bring it yourself so because Allah and so kind of like the prophet was uh, stuck between a what they call like a you know between them and a hard rock on the one side Allah is saying no on the other side there's like please just give us one more miracle we believe in you so Allah is making the point here even if we gave them everything every miracle was given to them they wouldn't have believed anyway why because Allah wouldn't have willed it for these people. Why? Well, ultimately because their intentions were bad. And these are just excuses. Those people that were going to believe, believed even in the past. When they were given miracles, they didn't believe. Those that were going to believe, believed. And those that weren't going to believe, didn't believe. Even if after seeing the miracles that they wanted to see and the prophets gave it to them. لو أننا أنزلنا إليهم الملائكة ملائكة and even if they Allah had sent down angels to them وكلم كلمهم الموت and even if the dead had talked to them وحشرنا عليهم كل شيء قبولا and we had brought everything in front of them face to face to face ما كان ولا يؤمن إلا أن يشاء الله they wouldn't have believed even unless Allah Himself had willed ولكن أكثرهم يجهل يجهلون but the fact is most of them they're just jahil they're emotional and they don't think uh, you could say uh, with their heart in in the in the sense of having a pure heart so uh, this ayah is very important in regards to the uh, some of the basic philosophy in Quran and that is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says وكذلك جعلنا لكل نبي أدو this is how we have made enemies of amongst uh, of the shayateen amongst the ins and jinn because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want all of the people to be guided so the prophet's worried that they're not believing and give them more signs so Allah is saying this is this is how it's meant to be they're being if everything was going to be easy then what's then in order to really see who's faithful there has to be a test if everything would be easy then there then the test would have been easy but the test is not easy the test is really difficult it's a difficult test كذلك جعلنا لكل نبي أدوا شياطين الإنس والجن يوحي بعضهم إلى بعض they give wahi revelation to one another they give inspiration to one another Zuhraf al ghurura, beautiful words that are decorated in ghurur, in in like in in deception and in in like an an illusion that they give one another to support one another, and so here they are. They have this, you know, the shayateen are helping them, and they are going against you, just like when Adam alayhi salatu wasalam came down. What was said? Ihbitu ba'dukum li ba'dinadu. Go down. You're going to be enemies of one another, and so now this is what it is. So every prophet has had this that the elite of that society. The elite and the shayateen of that society opposed the prophets of that time, right? And they gave wahi to one another, inspired one another with zuhraf al qawl ghurura, like kind of like beautiful slogans and and hopes of the future, and you know, like with this type of like deceptive, uh, enticing, beautiful amusement and entertaining sounding words, you know. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوا If Allah wanted, they wouldn't have done any of this. You're opposing you and not accepting your message. You know, when Sumayya رضي الله عنها was killed, when he had the spear, when Abu Jahl had the spear to kill her and to throw that spear in, in between her legs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have stopped his hands. But what happened, mentioned in Sultan Yasin, you know, when he was killed, Right? When uh, when when وجاء وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا ما لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون لا أتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بدور لا تغني عني شفاءة شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا في ظلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة they killed him and 
He went into Jannah, straight into Jannah. So now she's going through this, this test and trial that's difficult for her, but only Allah knows how how high her rank is going. Only, only if my people knew, down, down on earth, maybe the wife is crying and the children are crying and they're upset. But he's saying, Only if my people know how Allah has forgiven me. And he's made me, uh, you know, he's made, he's, uh, and he's given me such a gracious place to be at. So this is how it is. The test is going to be there. The test is going to be difficult. It's going to be very hard. But then the result is, if you really believe, then the result is, is the, the result will be a billion infinitely times more sweeter result. Inshallah, this is a good time to actually interject and give you the basic um, uh, flow of the surah. So it starts with every prophet had opposition. Oh, Prophet Wasallam, you have opposition. Previous prophets also had opposition. And then myths. How r r real substance or real religion, real deen, you could say, uh, ends up sometimes in this myths right these ideas like jesus died for us and he carries our forgiveness or like we will see how Quraysh did this regarding the animals and sacrifices and then there will be a little bit of a discussion about foods the forbidden foods we'll go into that um and you know Quraysh had uh you know conversations like oh uh you if an animal dies from the cliff and falls down you don't eat that but uh, if you sacrifice it and kill it, you eat that. So what's the difference? So these types of questions they were asking. And then in the end, in contrast to the myths that, you know, the, that sometimes when religion goes in the way of shirk and co goes into becoming mythologies, you could say, you know, because when people leave the real teachings, then they, in, in place of the real teachings, they bring in wrong teachings. And in the place of the real teachings, they bring in these mythologies, and so those mythologies, uh, you know, then they take over and the real religion goes to the side. The, and so the surah will end with a summary of what is really deen, what has been really lost, what was really the Abraham's legacy. Not these myths that you've made about, you know, killing animals uh, in the name of these other idols and uh, uh, these... Um, some animals that you let loose, um, you know, uh, like they're free and, and just in the name of these idols. So that's not real, the real essence of religion. That's not the purpose of religion. And then the purpose of religion and the goals of religion and what religion, meaning religion by religion, I don't mean just religion because Islam is not a religion, but I mean the word deen when I'm saying the word religion. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so that the hearts of those people who don't believe in the hereafter will incline towards, you know, this, uh, number one, uh, uh, these beautiful slogans of dunya, okay? Or incline towards this, you know, going with the shayateen and, and doing wahi and enticing each other and, and encouraging one another. And this is this is how Allah says, "Li li tasga ilayhi af ida taladina la yuminuna bil akhirah, wa yardu wa wa wardu hu li yaktarafu ma hum yuktarifun." And so they will then, you know, be happy with what they're doing, and then they will do what they're doing. They're going to do what will make them happy, and this is what's going to. This is the. And Allah wants this, you know, just like if you have water, you have the two. Um, bars inside the ionization the negative on one side the positive on one side and and so allah wants to create that polarization those people are going to believe on one side those people that are not going to believe on the other side and this is the you could say the clash that's going to take place so those who people who don't believe in the hereafter you know they're gonna they're gonna do the things in opposition to you that make them happy what well, وَلِيَقْتَرَفُوا مَا يُقْتَرِفُونَ And they'll do what they're going to do. أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ يَبْغِي حَكَمًا Do you want to make a, 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 a judge other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكِتَابَ مُفَصَّلًا While he is the one who sent the book to you that has explained all things. 
So what is the Prophet asking for? He's asking, look, I believe in the same Allah you believe in. The pagans, the Quraysh, they believed in Allah. They believed in the idols, but they also believed in Allah. Should I take for myself a judge other than Allah Himself, the one that it's the same Allah you believe in? I just we just don't believe in these idols that you have no uh, authority for. And those people have been given the book, they know for sure that this is an uh, those people that were that studied the scripture, those people that have been given the book, they know that this is the truth sent down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ And so don't be of those people who doubt. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَمَّتْ كَلِمَةَ رَبِّكَ, رب, uh, ربك صِدْقَ وَأَدْلَى And look, the kalima, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to end in truthfulness and justice. لا مبدل لكلمة There's no changing the kalimas of Allah. Meaning whatever He's commanded, whatever is going to, he's, He says be to, this is the kalima. The kalima of Allah is the command of Allah. He said it, the, you know, just say the word. They say, you know, so this is the kalima of Allah. وَهُوَ السَّمِيُّ عَلِيم And He is all hearing, all knowing. But please note, تَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ Completed. The word of your Rabb has been completed, has been fulfilled. Meaning in the sense that if Allah gives a command, and if Allah wants something, then it's going to happen. And if Allah doesn't want something, it's not going to happen. And if you obey, most of the people on earth, if you follow the majority of the people and their desires, you, you won't be on the path of Allah. They follow nothing but conjecture and guesswork. They're just guessing. Then Allah says, "Inna Rabbaka huwa a'lamu biman yudilla an sabilihi wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadin." And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows who has gone astray from His path, wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadin, and He knows the people that are guided. Fakulu mimma. Okay, so now here an important topic starts, which is eat in the things that have been on uh, eat mimma dhukir ismu Allah alay in kuntum iyahu in in kuntum bi ayatihi. In kuntum bi ayatihi yu'minun. Look, only eat that food. Now, this is not talking about before you eat food, you say bismillah. Okay? This is talking about that the idol worshippers, the pagans, they used to cut the animals in the names other than God. Over here, Allah is telling the Muslims that what Allah wants the Muslims to do is to not eat something unless it's slaughtered in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah said, كُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرُ اسْمُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ Eat that in which the name of Allah is mentioned. Now if you notice, this is a command. Now if you're eating food and don't say Bismillah, it's not fart. It's not a command. The command is for the slaughtering. The way you have to say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Okay, you have to do it in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there are fiqh issues regarding this, which I'm not going to go into, but I'm giving the, as it is in the Qur'an. كُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرُ اسْمُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ بِآيَاتِهِ مُؤْمِنِينَ And I would say that even though there are difference of opinions in fiqh, but this is extremely more important in today's world because what you are what you eat and there is a lot of poison out there in food. Okay? And so if you eat in the name of Allah, you eat something that's slaughtered in the name of Allah, it tastes better and it's more healthier. It's more also healthier for just medical reasons too because it's actually, you actually make sure that the blood is all come out. And uh, this point will become clear in a second. Now what would happen is, uh, so Allah says, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا What is it that you don't eat? مِمَّا ذُكِرُ اسْمُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ That meat in which the name of Allah is mentioned. وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ It has already been made clear to you the things that are haram. Now that some of the details are going to come towards uh, later on. We'll discuss that. إِلَّا except for the things that you were forced. If you're forced to eat pig, then you can eat that. Majority of these people, when it comes, especially in the in the matters of halal and haram and food, especially, they go on the wrong path by their desires without any knowledge. Even today, the majority of the Muslims are not very careful what they eat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows those people that transgress the limits. It's important to know in the real world which ingredients are allowed, which ingredients are not allowed. I encourage every Muslim to take a class, um, you know, 
that, that anyone that's cooking, any Muslim that's cooking should know which ingredients are allowed and not allowed in the, uh, so that when you go to the store and you buy things, you know if it's halal or not halal, or if it's suspicious. You know, shaitan is trying to bring the haram food in every single thing. This is what shaitan is trying to do. So that he can affect you with it and then uh, have a bigger impact upon you. Leave the sins that are external, outward sins, and also the sins that are inside, in the inside of your heart. Those people who earn the sins, the, the big sins. So, they will be given the result and they will be rewarded for the things that they're committing, the evil that they're committing. And do not eat. And do not eat. Okay? That meat in which the name of Allah is not taken. This is evil. And the shayateen, they try to intervene in this issue. Okay? And you, they give inspiration to one another, لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ to give you jidal, to give you argument. وَإِن, وَإِن أت, uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن أَعْتَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ مُشْرِكُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ If you obey them, if you follow them, then you are of the mushrikun. If you eat meat cut in the name of other than Allah, then you are uh, a mushrik. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكِرْ اسْمَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ Now this opens the door to many of the questions of our situation over here, especially in the West. Can you eat the food that is secular? You know, basically McDonald's and this and that. This is a longer question, but we should always go for Ihsan. Ihsan is, the best option is to eat hand-slaughtered food, okay? Uh, and even of the top scholars on all sides, you know, for beef, especially for cow, because the way it is killed, it is not killed, you know, with uh, the, the the slaughtering manner, okay, at all, especially the cow. Like the others, you can argue about that, but for the cow especially, you cannot eat beef. Uh, this is like absolute. Now the chicken, they hang it, they don't say bismillah, but they cut it from the throat, which according to some of the fuqaha is okay. But again, we, we are really living in times where food is a big, is the big issue that causes big problems at the end of our children not listening to us because the food, and Imam Malik has a statement about this. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this place, leave the sins that are both external and internal. Because these, the, what you eat is, you're what you eat, number one, but what you eat has an impact upon how easy it is for you to follow Allah. It, what you eat has an impact upon how your children will behave to you. If your children grow up on halal, pure halal food, right, then that will have a different impact upon them compared to if it's not so halal. And in the same way, if it's zabiha, zabiha meat, for example, it's it's worth the extra few dollars. It's worth the extra. It, it, it definitely the food that's zabiha, hand slaughtered, tastes much better. Okay, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرُ اسْمَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ Don't eat the meat in which the name of Allah is not mentioned. إِنَّهُ لَفِسْقُ This is evil. إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَيَحُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ Shaytan does wahi to one another لِيُجَادِلُكُمْ To argue with you. And of course, there's always arguments. But I'm. this is why I'm saying, as response, I'm saying even though there may be other fuqaha and other opinions, but no, none of the fuqaha will disagree or disagree that the best is the best, and the best is and the safest is to eat zabiha meat the way the Prophet did it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In ata'atumuhum, if you obey them, in nakum la mushrikun, then you will be of the people who make uh, you have done shirk because you've not obeyed this command of Allah <coughs> to eat food and uh, <coughs> only eat that meat in which the name of Allah is taken. Now you can say from here, well, this is talking in contrast to the other idols and so on and so forth, and that's a fair argument. Then Allah says, uh, 
uh, now here the Quraysh uh, okay so here وَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ if, if is the one who is dead like the one who is living وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي, في النَّاسِ and that person who has nur and he's walking amongst the people and he's alive and he's walking amongst the people is that person the same as the one who's dead? they're not the dead, right? Uh, so Allah says, "Awaman kana maytan fahiyinahu wa jalnahu nuran yamshi bihi fi nas kaman mafaluhu fi zulumat." Is that person's example is like the one who is in the darknesses? Laysa bi khari jaminha. It's like he's in a black hole; he can't come out of it. Kadhalik azuyina lil kafirina ma kano ya malun. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made beautiful for the for those people that reject the truth, what they do. What they do has been made beautiful to them. And they want to be in darkness. They don't want to be in light. And so some people are just like that. كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا فِي كُلِّ قَرْيَةٍ أَكَابِرَ مُجْرِمِيهَا this is how Allah says, it's, you know, just as they're opposing the Prophet wasallam. this is how Allah has made in every village, the big people of that village, criminals. يَمْكُرُونَ فِيهَا They plot and plan in there, right? وَمَا يَمْكُرُونَ إِلَّا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ But their plotting and planning is just against themselves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ They just don't realize it. وَإِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ قَالُوا لَنْ نُؤْمِنَكَ حَتَّى نُوتِيَ مِثْلَ مَا أُوتِيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ they say, إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ Every time a, a, some sign comes to them, they hear about the Qur'an or they see some miracle, قَالُوا لَنْ نُؤْمِنَا We won't believe حَتَّى نُؤْتِيَ مِثْلَ مَا أُوتِيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And we won't believe until the same thing is given to us that is given to the Messenger of Allah. Either in the past or at the time of the Prophet. Then Allah says, Allahu a'lamu min haythu yaj'al rusala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where to place the prophethood. You know, سَيُسِيبُ الَّذِينَ أَجْنَمُوا سَغَارًا إِنْدَ اللَّهِ This is so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cause these people that have done these crimes to become small with Allah. وَأَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ And with a severe punishment, مِمَا كَانُوا يَمْكُرُونَ You know, they just have these excuses and this is, excuses are part of their plotting and planning. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ As for the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide him. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Allah opens his chests for Islam. You become broad-minded. You become broad-minded in, in that sense. Are you broad-minded enough to leave what your forefathers said? And are you broad, intelligent enough to embrace the truths that are within your heart? Then you are, then you're ready to embrace Islam. Yashrah sadrahu lil Islam, whose heart Allah and whose chest Allah opens for Islam. Wa wa man yar yur did an yudillu yajal sadrahu dayyqan. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa taala wants to lead astray, Allah makes his chest tight. Dayyqan harajan. Okay, as if he's uh, as if he's going to the uh, you know he he's if, if as if he's going into the sky because what happens as you go to the sky down earth in the over here in the ground there's more oxygen molecules as you go up there's less 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 oxygen molecules as they're less so the, the breathing rate happens in a human being based upon how many oxygen mo molecules are going inside the body and that tells the brain what your breathing rate should be okay if the as you go up okay uh, the breathing, uh, the brain is being told you need to breathe more because we need more oxygen and, and as uh, you know the uh, the air is more dense, and as the as you go up, the air becomes less dense. So the oxygen molecules are farther away, and and it takes more breaths to get the same amount of oxygen molecules inside you. So you start to hyperventilate. You start to breathe faster and faster and faster as you're going up. Okay, okay. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes your chest tight, like what? Like you you know you you can't breathe. Okay, and you're like, you're suffering for oxygen, okay? Okay, yes, adu fis sama is like the one who's going to the sky. Kadalika yaj alallahu rijsa ala ladina la yu'minun. 
So Allah makes it tight and restricted, harajan, dayyakan, harajan, because it becomes, it's like the molecules, the molecules are less, so it's, you feel restricted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, كَذَلِكَ يَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ رِجْسِ This is how Allah makes the filth عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Those people who don't, uh, those who, people who don't believe, this is how Allah put, makes what they're doing like filth. Or you can say impure, because in this case, in this context, you know, you're going to eat a, a, the animal meat that is uh, cut in the names of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that's the filth, okay? And uh, over here, the Quraysh used to allow, you know, they used to cut meat in the name of their idols. Now, if there was, uh, the, and, and what's interesting is the Quraysh, uh, and the pagans of Arabia, what they did is, like, for example, if there is uh, more meat, and it will either go to Allah or it will go to the idol, they always made sure it go towards the idol. All extra meat would go towards the idol. So it's like they didn't want to do anything in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هَذَا صِرَاطُ رَبِّكَ مُسْتَقِيمًا This is the path of your Rabb, that's the straight way. قَدْ فَصَّلْنَا الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ This is how we make clear to you the signs for people that will think and ponder and reflect. لَهُمْ دَارُ السَّلَامِ in the رَبِّهِمْ For them is دَارُ السَّلَامِ, the peace, uh, the house of peace, meaning in Jannah, okay? in the رَبِّهِمْ with their Rabb. وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is their protector for the things that they, because of what they are doing, okay? And you can say wali also means friend. وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا And that day, on the day of judgment, when we will gather all mankind together. يَا مَعْشَ الْجِنِّ قَدْ إِسْتَكْثَرْتُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ وَقَالَ أَوْلِيَاءُهُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ رَبَّنَا Okay, so <coughs> on the day of judgment, this is a scene being pictured. Uh, get, we're getting a picture of a scene on the day of judgment. يَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا On that day when they're all gathered. يَا مَعْشَ الْجِنِّ قَدْ إِسْتَكْثَرْتُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ And Allah, uh, it will be said, قَدْ إِسْتَكْثَرْتُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ إِسْتَكْثَرْتُمْ So many of the human beings that you led astray. وَقَالَ أَوْلِيَاهُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ And and those people, you know, the the, the friends of shayateen, the devil of shayateen, and the human, as their human shayateen, and the devil, jinn shayateen, they're friends, and they give revelation to one another, inspire one another, or entice one another, as mentioned earlier. So the ins the, of those people, the Satan worshippers, you could say, the, or the followers of Satan, amongst the human beings, one of them will start saying to Allah, and Allah will stop him right there. رَبَّنَا إِسْتَمْتَنَا بَعْضُنَا بِبَعْض We profited from both each other, the jinn and the human, we profited for each other. Right? We used to do things for them, they used to do things for us. وَبَلَغْنَا أَجَلَ And so our time, appointed time, كَيْ لَنَا That appointed time that you appointed for us, and then we died. So now he's giving an excuse, you know, we profited, or whatever his excuse was, but Allah shuts him off. قَالَ أَنَّارُ مَثْوَلَّكُمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا The fire is enough for you now. That's it, you'll stay in there. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ Except for, you know, that which Allah uh, d desires. Or he has puts as an exception. Inna Rabbaka Hakimun Alim. Indeed, your Rabb is Hakim and Alim. He's all wise, all knowing. وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّي بَعْضُ ظَالِمِينَ بَعْضَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will make, you know, some of the كَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّي بَعْضُ ظَالِمِينَ بَعْضًا How unjust will just turn towards the unjust. <coughs> and you know, there's another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which the Prophet said that if someone gives strength to a wrongdoer, you know, then then man masha ma zaliman, the Prophet, whoever walks with a wrongdoer, liyuqawiyahu, to give him strength. فَقَدْ حَرَجَ عَنِ islam He's come out of Islam. And another, another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever, you know, they, they help one another. But the Prophet said, uh, if you help a zalim, then that zalim will also, you know, zalim doing unjust things to other people, then soon that zalim will, uh, it, perhaps that zalim will come and put, he will put you in difficulty too. You know, today you're helping him and you're thinking, you know, you're going to get something of dunya by helping him. But very soon that same king that you're helping today will come turn around against you. 
right? كذلك نولي بعض الظالمين بعض بعضا بما كانوا يكسبون because of what they have earned. يا معش الجن والإنس. Now this ayah uh, seems to indicate that there were prophets amongst the jinns. So this is one opinion some of the scholars have had. My opinion is completely opposite to that. There can be no prophets of Allah amongst the jinn people. Just like it happened in the case of the prophet and also the previous prophets, prophets as mentioned by the by the jinns that were listening to the prophet. This is the same uh, revelation that we heard Moses have. If you remember, they mentioned Moses. So they didn't have, and the reason a jinn cannot be a prophet is that he doesn't have ruh. See, Ruh al Qudus Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he is a ruh, ruh al Qudus. The revelation from Allah is a ruh. Our soul is a ruh, right? So, revelation Quran is called a ruh in Quran. Those ayahs are going to come, not here but later. The angels are a ruh. The human being has ruh. Okay? <coughs> so, Allah says, فَنَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي And I blew in man from my ruh. So there is some, you could say, you could say like something special that is uh, something that is from Alam Al-Amr. It is something beyond this world of time and space, not the world of this creation, but something from the world of unseen that has been put into us. Okay? That is something special that human beings carry that other species don't have and jinns don't have. To carry that revelation in that way. Okay? So, uh, it seems, my opinion is very strongly on the fact that jinn, prophets and rasuls can only be human beings, not jinns. And as Quran indicates, that the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were human beings and the jinns followed those human beings. Whether it was at the time of Musa alayhi or whether it was at the time of the Prophet sallallahu But Allah knows best. يَا مَعْشَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلُ مِنْكُمْ Now this is the ayah. Oh, oh you people of jinn and ins, did not come their messengers to you amongst yourselves. يَقُصُّ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ And they would recite to you my signs. وَيَنْذِرُكُمْ لِقَاءِ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا And they would warn you about this day that, we're, uh, that you would meet me on this day. And they will say, yes, we bear witness. Allah and Fusina over ourselves. But what happened is they got deceived by the life of the dunya. And they, bore, they were witnesses against themselves. That they were kafirin. They rejected the truth. And this is what will happen. That the kuffar will at the end admit, yes, we did deny the truth. ذلك أن أن لم يكن ربك محلك القرى بظلم. This is because Allah does not kill any city or destroy any city, and by wrong, just unjustly, Allah won't do that. وأهلها وأهلها غافلون. And the people in that city, that nation, that civilization, they're غافل, they're heedless, they don't know. No, first Allah sends a messenger, then Allah make and gives them the clear proofs, gives them the clear way, gives them a clear choice, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes judgment, after which the angels come down, and then Allah will take the judgment in the hereafter. And for everyone will be a daraja, a degree of what they have done. And your Rabb is, O Muhammad sallallahu not unaware of the things that they're doing. Allah is fully aware of what Quraysh is planning against you, and Allah is fully aware of what people are planning against Muslims today. And your Rabb is Ghani Rahma. He's Al Ghani, most uh, rich, most. Uh, he has everything, and the rahma, and he is full of mercy. If he wants, he could just get rid of you. And he can replace you with someone else after you. Just like he created you from other people, from other descendants, from other, uh, you know, bloodlines. So, you know, the, Allah can replace you with anyone. That's not an issue for him. In in inna ma tu aduna laat. Inna ma tu aduna laat. Indeed, what you're being promised, O Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will definitely happen. Wa ma antum bi mu'ajizin. And you can you will not 
وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ And O oh, oh Prophet, you and your companions will not be made helpless, will not be left helpless. Okay? قُلْ يَا قَوْمِ يَعْمَلُوا عَلَى مَكَانَتِكُمْ إِنِّي أَعْمَلُ This is a very powerful ayah. Oh my people, do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do, do what you're going to do. وَإِنِّي أَعْمَلُ I'm, I'm also going to do what I'm going to do. فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ تَكُنْ لَهُ عَاقِبَةُ الدَّارِ And then we will soon know who has the final result. Who has the 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 house at the end also is the other meaning. Okay, who is who? لا يفنه ظالمون He does not give uh, the success to the people that are unjust. Allah will not do that. But that only in the case that there's the believers there. If everyone's the unjust, and the and the, the people doing good are just too few and they can't, they don't have power. Then then they have to get the power. They have to work to get the power. Then Allah will help them. وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ مَا ذَرَى مِنَ الْحَرْثِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ نَصِيبًا فَقَالُوا هَذَا لِلَّهِ بِزَعْمِهِمْ وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا So you know they had different uh, these kind of like superstitions. They would uh, put like a, a, some animals in the name of their idols and some in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And so and, and they would do the same thing with fields. Their fields that they had. This is for this idol and this is for this idol and leave this to you know uh, it won't uh, you know this is just let it free in the, in the name of this idol or let it free in the name of Allah. They would do all these superstitious things and they had their conditions for them and so on and so forth. The same thing that we read over uh, in the previous juz about uh, wasila and ham and so on and so forth. وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ مَا ذَرَعْ مِنَ الْحَرْسِ And they made uh, for Allah a part of, you know, they would, uh, and uh, from the field and from the cattle, a, a portion, right? فَقَالُوا هَذَا لِلَّهِ And they would say, this is for Allah. لِزَعْمِهِمْ وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا And this is what we also give to our part, the partners of Allah. أَسْتَغْفِرُ وَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ وَمَا فَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then they had these funny rules, right? فَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ فَلَا يَصِلُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ Then they would say, whatever, you know, the, 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 even though Allah is the one who created the cattle, himself and now they're making putting uh, these kettles in the names of these idols and even though Allah created the crops but now they're putting these crops in the names of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah says here and then what they used to do they had this uh, you know tradition فَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ فَلَا يَصُلُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ right so whatever was for the idols right it would not ever go into the portion of Allah وَمَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ فَهُوَ يُوصِلُ إِلَى شُرَكَائِهِمْ And whatever was done in the name of Allah, they would still put a portion of that into their idols. Right? So this is how they... سَأَمَا يَحْكُمُونَ How evil it is. I mean, it's like double evil what they were doing. Now, it should also be... It will become clear. I think I'm going to talk about this in Surah Al-A'raf more when the, the proper place comes. That why is shirk so bad? Uh, and, and, and some aspects of it from a historical perspective, so that Araf will talk about that. وَكَذَلِكَ زُيِّنَ لِكَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ قَتْلَ أَوْلَادِهِمْ And in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it was made beautiful in the, in the eyes of these mushrikeen. قَتْلَ أَوْلَادِهِمْ The killing of their children. They used to kill their sons if they didn't, thought they couldn't provide for them. And they used to kill their daughters, as everyone already knows. وَكَانُوا uh, لِيُرْضُوهُمْ uh, and this is what shirk does. Because, now I'm going to talk about this. Um, for the people that are polytheists, the killing of their children, and you know the, this thing of sacrificing to the idols, and you can see this in pagan uh, history, uh, it's all over it, right? Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so the, their partners that they made other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made it pleasing to them or justified to them the killing of their children. And this is the thing, that if you have tawheed, tawheed keeps you from making mistakes and doing evil things. When you get off into tawheed and closer to shirk, right, the more you go towards shirk, then shirk, shirk when there are many, many partners and there's no moral clarity, 
and the the moral of one god is the one and the moral of the other god is the other and and the story of one god is one and the story and the moral story of the other one is the other when you have this confusing thing then then that's what you get you get your children you're going to get a religion that kills children at the end right hinduism is the, is the religion that has the caste system right so when religion gets corrupt and the further the closer you get to shirk the because then many many sins come out of that and this again i will talk about this in in the next surah even in more detail لِيُرْضُوهُمْ to take them back لِيَلْبِسُوا عَلَيْهِمْ دِينَهُمْ to, uh, to destroy uh, to basically uh, to destroy and make confusing them their deen وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا فَعَلُوا if Allah wanted they wouldn't have done, them, done that they wouldn't have been able to do this but the, Allah has allowed this now shayateen are on one side and the truth is on the other side and Allah wants this polarization to take place فَزَرْهُمْ now just leave them وسلم, they're asking for these signs and you know this is what they're doing so just leave them مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ for the things that they are doing so these ayah, this ayah, these ayat and this ayah and the coming ayahs are very important in regards to comparing what happens to uh, a religion when it is perverted versus the real, real teachings, which will come towards the end of Sudan Anam. Okay, but this is what happens when a religion gets perverted, and this is what happens with paganism, with making partners to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now, what happened is, you know, you come up with funny ideas, funny ideas like, oh. You know, this, uh, the, these camels, we're going to give these in the name of this God and this God and this God and these, cam these cows and goats and this and like that. And on this one, we won't ride on top of it like this. So you come up with these weird, like really weird, uh, like uh, myths that are not even real. And the real teachings of the deen, that you won't kill anyone, that you will be nice to your parents, these, you know, basic fundamentals that are going to be repeated towards the end of this surah and then are repeated in detail in, uh, in Surah Al-Bani Israel. It will come over there. Those real teachings, they go to the side. And then what happens is these mythological teachings become the basis by which you then justify killing other people. Like, for example, in this case, they used to... Um, uh, kill their daughters and in this case they used to kill uh, their sons if they felt they didn't uh, you know have the, enough money to raise them because now that they are instead of focusing on the big god they were focusing on the little gods and when you have little gods you focus more on the little gods than you do on the big god and so what would happen is is that when they were so they would give something in the name of Allah too you see you always have the Kaaba but around the Kaaba you have the idols and so when they were in trouble Okay, so they have some things that they've sacrificed in the name of Allah, the true God, and then they have some things that they have given in the name of their gods. Now, when they were in trouble, what did they do? They took the portion that was for Allah, that they had assigned for Allah, they would put it into the portion of the, um, the portion of uh, those that, uh, that, are not, that are the idols. Okay, and so because they felt closer to them then they felt closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now when you do this, this leads to a whole type of mess. And the religion gets uh, perverted. And you end up with things like the caste system, like the Hindus have today. <coughs> or you end up with the idea <coughs> that we are better than all humanity. Or you end up with the idea that, you know, that uh, you're forgiven no matter what you do. Right? And uh, you could do whatever you want. You're forgiven, like in Christianity. You just believe in grace, that it's the grace of Jesus. We believe in Him. We can do whatever we want from here. And then once you focus on these myths and these smaller gods, and you, and you lose focus of, as mentioned in this surah, those who don't believe in the hereafter, those are the people what? That make partners to Allah then. So, but if you believe in Allah, you you focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is the right path. And then the big teachings, the main teachings, the universal teachings of the deen, they, they continue solid. But when you start making, uh, focusing on pagans and on uh, idol worship, then uh, religion becomes perverted. And then you have all sorts of customs and ideas. And, and then, you know, they were, um, they were saying this is from, because this was Quraysh and they're from Ibrahim. They're like, this is coming from Ibrahim. This is coming from our forefathers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging here. These are the ideas you think that are coming from Ibrahim. These don't even make sense. 
So this needs to be kept in mind. وَقَالُوا هَذَا أَنْعَامٌ وَحَرْصٌ حِجْرٌ لَا يَتْمَعُوهَا إِلَّا مَنْ نَشَاءُ بِزَعْمِهِمْ and continuing on the same subject, So this is the you know the cattle and this is the crops again. That is hijr, that's forbidden. And no one can eat from it except you know whatever whoever has a claim based upon their customs. And the uh, the cattle, you know, its back is forbidden. The other meaning of hurima dhuhuriha uh dhuhur Hurimat dhuruha is that writing it is forbidden. So this is the other meaning. Amu la yuthkuna ismullah and the and the and the um the cattle they wouldn't read the name of Allah on it at all. If tara alayhi just inventing this lie. So sayajzihim ma kanu yaftarun. We will soon uh, re, uh you know we will soon reward them for what they made up. So. Allah, number one, created these animals like cattle and these livestock, domestic animals for human beings to eat from them. But because Allah gave this them to us, then we have to read the name of Allah on them before we eat them. And you'll find this to be very, very interesting. Um, I'm going to share with you um, something very interesting. Reading the name of Allah on the animals, by the way, is very, very miraculous. I just want you to see this clip, just uh, this brother, and alhamdulillah, this uh, Mercy Halal slaughtering group, they made this. And it's it's not just that, you know, you kill the name of Allah, but the animals know Allah. And so when you take Allah's name, when you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, you say, Bismillah, when you say the kalimas of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the animals, they immediately respond. And they immediately surrender, like they're ready to die, right? And so, just watch this clip and you'll find it very interesting. On the ground, officer. <laughs> <laughs> This is total submission. Total submission. This guy is ready for anything to be done to him. And he's not nervous, he's not resisting. He's in total relaxation. No panic hormones whatsoever. See, I let him go, he gets up. Abdul Wahid, you want to do him? No, you need to show to a skeptical person. Bismillah. It's okay, baby. It's okay. I'm not doing anything yet. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. It's okay, baby. Same reaction. They all react the same. The power of the word. They're more religious than most humans. Bismillah. <coughs> 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 Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Total submission. These guys had a little, uh, they come from a bigger ranchers, so they're a little bit wild. They're not used to uh, be touched and handled by humans. And uh, for them to turn around and just lay down like, really in total peace. 
Answering the comic. Definitely. The power of the word gets clearer and clearer after, after you see more and more submit. Probably some of you are watching So that, that establishes my point. Also, you know, if you do it this way and the animal is still fighting and doesn't want to be slaughtered, then you have the choice not to slaughter it. You know, but majority of the times they will surrender and they will be ready to surrender. And I've seen a lot of interesting things regarding slaughtering, how the animals seem to know what's going to happen and how they respond. Um, so slaughtering, that's like a miraculous act when it's done properly. Because the animal gives in. When the animal gives in, it has no fear. When it gives in, it has no fear. And the meat is more tender. This is the reason the halal, the zabiha meat tastes better. Okay. Uh, so, so this is what they were doing. And then they would say, uh, uh, So this is things they would say, don't read the name of Allah over these things. This is iftara alayhi. Allah says, these are things that they invented. And we will, in, we will pay, we will reward them for the things that they used to invent. Then Allah says, قَالُوا مَا فِي بُطُونِ هَذِهَا الْأَنْعَامُ خَالِصَةٌ لِذَكُورِنَا وَمُحَرَّمٌ عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِنَا And then, you know, they would invent these things that what's in, in the, uh, in the button, in the stomach of the, um, of the, of the cattle is, is, is just for us males. It's not for the females. وَإِنْ يَكُنْ مَيْتٌ فَهُمْ فِيهِ شُرَكَاء And then what would happen is, if the baby is born dead, instead of alive, then they would say, oh, okay, now the, everybody can eat from it. So, yajzihim was fahum. And, uh, and we will uh, reward them for their descriptions and these ideas that they have made up. In Nahu, Allah is Hakimun Alim. He is very wise and all-knowing. قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ قَتَلُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ سَفَهَمْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ and are lost to those people. In loss are those people who killed their children without any knowledge. بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Without any knowledge. حَرَّمُوا مَا رَزَقَهُمُ اللَّهِ And because they killed their children out of saying, Oh, you know, we don't have enough wealth, so they killed them. So Allah says, حَرَّمُوا مَا رَزَقَهُمُ اللَّهِ You made haram upon them, but Allah made for their, them the risk Allah put there. You made it haram. افتراء على الله so they made an invention over Allah. <coughs> These are the things that happen when you fall into shirk. Then you forget the power of Allah because now you're thinking small like these small idols. Right? And you, you're thinking at the level of these uh, your imagination of these small idols. You be, fall at that level and you say, oh, maybe we don't have enough food to... Uh, you, only Allah can say, no, I'm the provider of everything. I'm going to do it. You don't kill them for that reason. They have gone astray and they are not rightly guided. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we start with the araf <coughs> As you know, <coughs> this is Haruf al muqattaat like Alif Lam Mim. This is Alif Lam Mim Saad with four letters. And then you have Alif Lam Mim Ra with four letters also. So Alif Lam Mim. كتاب أنزل إليك فلا تكون في صدرك في حرج. The first uh, uh, connection with the previous surah, Surah Al-Anam, is right here. So, O Prophet Sallallahu let there not be any harj, harj in your in your chest, right? Uh, let not there be any distress, right? And over there you have فَمَنْ يُرِدُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يَهْدِيَ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Right? Over there, you had the, whoever Allah wants to guide, He opens His heart for Islam. So, uh, that you guide, you give warning with this Quran. So again, this is another connection with the previous surah. They both talk about using this Quran to give warning especially. And it is a reminder for the people who believe. So, specifically referring to this Quran. Generally, after Haruf al muqattaat the Quran is mentioned. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ 
and follow that which has been revealed to you from your Rabb, whatever has been sent down to you from your Rabb, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ And don't follow any other uh, false gods uh, other than Allah Himself. قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Few of you are those that think and reflect. كَمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ أَحْلَكْنَاهَا how many of nations there are, or cities there are, or uh, cities that they are that we have destroyed? Uh, they were, uh, you know, uh, came to they came to them our punishment at night, right? While they or while they were sleeping in the afternoon. Um, and when the the uh, the punishment came to them, right? They made no dua, okay? When our punishment came to them, except that they would say, Oh Allah, we are the wrongdoers, so please save us from this. But the time was over because Allah just gives you a nation a certain time. By that time, if they decided to surrender to Allah, then that's fine. If they have not decided by that time to surrender to Allah, then the punishment of Allah comes. We will definitely ask uh, the uh, messengers, and we will definitely ask. We will definitely ask. Uh, the one whom the messengers were sent to and we'll definitely ask the messengers regarding if the message was what clearly given or not if it's been clearly given then we will definitely be asking our prophets about this because it's very important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah does not take an action as mentioned in the previous surah so I want you to understand how these two our surahs are connected uh uh, Allah will not destroy a nation until its people are, if their people are ignorant and don't know the truth, right? But when the light comes and you turn away from the light, then now you have a problem. If you didn't know that what is right, what is wrong, and there was no messenger, then that's a different story. And then Allah says, فَلَا نُقَصِّنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ بِعِلْمٍ and we will relate to you the events with knowledge, O Prophet ﷺ. We were always there watching everything, and now we will relate some of that to you, Haq. The measuring of things, the weighing of things on that day is an absolute truth. Those people whose weight will be heavy, they are the ones that will be successful on that day. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. I mean, Allah make us amongst those people. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Those people whose, whose, whose good deeds will be few on the scale. Okay? أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسَرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They are the ones who have wronged themselves بِمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَظْلِمُونَ Because of the injustices that you did to our signs. Which can have many meaning. But, لَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Look, we gave you a st stable place on for, on earth. وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعِشْ And we made this a place for your ma'ish, for your plain, a place to make a livelihood. قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Only if, if you are you that give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ كُنَّا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ Now, this is the second time the story of Adam والسلام, is going to be mentioned. The first time was in Surah Al-Baqarah. But here, of course, this story is mentioned in Quran in seven different places, which is interesting. Because the seven Ihzab, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, divided the Quran into, by that, what's interesting is that this story is mentioned each and every time. So that's like, it's, the story is mentioned seven times in Quran. That itself should tell you how important it is. But how the companions of the Prophet divided Quran into seven ihzab, and each one of those ihzab contained the story, should tell you how important the story is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّر صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ We created you, and we, Allah created us from what? From dust and from water. خَلَقَ كُلَّ حَيَّ مِنَ الْمَاءِ We've created every living thing from water, and, uh, and He created you from turab. When water and dust come together, it makes teen, okay? Then that teen had to be salsalin kal fakhar, had to be created like into a pottery type, type, a body had to be made, right? That would be, uh, 
And, and so there are these stages of creation that are very interesting. So Allah created you. Then we fashioned you. You know, you, you make something, right? And then you put the finishing touches on it. So this is the finishing touches on it. Then when Allah, when He made, Allah put the finishing touches, everything was done. Then we said, now you bow down to Adam. They all bowed down. All the angels bowed down except Iblis. He was not of those people that would bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Adam. Now, what's interesting here you might want to consider is that was the sujood to Adam or was Adam the uh, Qibla? Some scholars like Imam Razi has mentioned that Adam was the Qibla, sujood was to Allah. So this is also possible. But the main thing was to show the importance of man and the role of man in the coming history, right? So, you know, all this has been created out of, out of, you know, the seventh day is the day of Jummah, and it's also the day of judgment, the seventh day. So it took six days to create the creation. The seventh day is the day of judgment, Maliki Yawmiddin. Adam was created on the sixth day, and now Allah is going to see how his affairs, how the affairs of him and his children are going to uh, hold up, uh, you know, to the scrutiny of the court on the day of judgment. Okay? And over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the time, takes the time to ask shaitan, Maybe shaitan could have said, Allah, you asked the angels to bow down. You didn't ask a jinn to bow down. But that's not the answer he gave. What is, why didn't you bow down when I commanded you to? He said, Shaitan said, I am better than he is. This is the first racist statement in human history. You've created me from fire. And you've created him from water and clay. <coughs> water and dust, which makes clay. Go from here. Now you can't be here. Okay? This is not the place for the proud people. It's not for you to have show takabbur over here. Now you leave from here. You're going to be of the small ones. You're going to be, uh, you know, made small, irrelevant. And then Shaitan said, Please, Allah, give me time till the day of judgment, till they are raised up again. Now, it's interesting that Shaitan knew about this day of judgment, right? But it, uh, the Shaitan knew. Oh, Shaitan, okay, you have your reprieve, you have your time, do what you want. I swear, Allah, by what you have led me astray. I will stand in in like I will I will I will put them in, in the wrong way. And I will sit on, on, on uh, for them. Where? Where will I find the people to attack? Who are the people I'm gonna attack? On your straight path. That's where I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit right there on your straight path. And those righteous people who have, you know, the big beards and look so pious, those are the people who commit themselves to Islam, okay? Those are the people I'm going to attack. May Allah protect us. Then he says, and then he says, I will definitely come to them before their hands, and behind them, onto their right, onto their left. Most of them are not going to be thankful to me. 
قُلْ اِخْرُجْ مِنْهَا مَذْمُومًا مَذْحُورًا So Allah said, go out of this place. You have been uh, humiliated and expelled. فَمَنْ تَبْعَكَ مِنْهُمْ لَأَمْ لَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنْكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ As for those that follow you, all of them I'm going to put into the hellfire. <coughs> and that's it. And Allah said, Oh Adam, you and your wife, they live in Jannah. Both of you eat from Jannah as much as you like, right? So you can get close to each other. And uh, do not go near this tree. If you go near this tree, you will be a wrongdoing people. Over here is the word waswasa. So, you know, usually the image we get is he came in some physical form and said something physically to them. But here the word waswasa is there. And there could be different stages where maybe it started like this and then it went up to becoming, you know, a physical thing that they finally see. So, shaitan did waswasa to them. Uh, and then shaitan, he will uh, to show lahuma ma wuriya of the things that they were con that was being concealed anhuma from both of them min um, okay regarding their shame so their shame was exposed qala ma nahakuma rabbukuma an hadhihi shajara did not Allah subhanahu wa taala stop you from this tree illa an takuna malakaini aw uh, no, uh, Allah did not stop you from going near this tree. Illa an takuna malakain, except you'll become like angels, aw takuna min al khalidin, or you'll have immortal life. If you eat from this tree, you know Allah is doing is telling you not to go near this tree because Allah doesn't want you to have life forever, and Allah doesn't want you to become like the angels. So He put an incentive. Shaitan did a waswasa and put an incentive in the in the mind. Or in the heart of Iblis, uh, sorry, in the heart of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Astaghfirullah. So, uh, so the, sh the waswasa was done by shaitan, and shaitan made it appealing to him that, look, you'll be like the angels, and you will, like, have life forever. And, 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 and so if you eat from the tree, this will happen. And Shaitan swore up and down, saying, I am just so sincere to you, just eat from that tree. So both of them were deceived. Okay? So when they ate from the tree and tasted from the tree, then their private parts showed. وَطَفِقَ يَخْسِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنَ ال مِنَ الْوَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ and then what they started doing is what what طَفِقَ يَخْسِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا so they would take you know the leaves of jannah or something and they would start trying to hide their shame by fastening the the the, the clo like kind of like fastening them to themselves or مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ by the, uh, tr the, the trees of Jannah فَنَاذَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا so Allah called upon both of them أَلَمْ أَلَمْ أَنْ أَنْهَكُمَا did I not stop both of you أَنْ تِلْكُمَا الشَّجَرَةِ from this tree for both of you وَأَقُلْ لَكُمَا and I said to both of you إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ لَكُمَا عَدُوَّ مُبِينَ indeed shaitan is an open enemy to you did I not already tell you this قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And they said, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا If you don't forgive us, وَتَرْحَمْنَا And have mercy upon us, لَنَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ We will definitely be of those people who are in total loss. قَالَ إِحْبِطُوهَا بَعْدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ أَدُوا Same thing was mentioned in Surah Baqarah. Now you're both enemies and both groups of the humans and the jinns and those that will listen to shaitan and those that will listen to Allah. Now you're enemies of one another. لَكُمْ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرًا وَمَتَاءٌ إِلَاهِينَ For you is a place, stable place to, to remain on earth and some benefits to a certain time. 
قال فيها تحيون وفيها تموتون وما ومنها تخرجون. In this earth now you will live, and in this earth you will die, and from it you will be brought out. يا بني آدم يا بني آدم قد أنزلنا إليكم لباسا يواري سوأتي سوأتك سوأتكم وريشة. So over here, Allah is talking about clothes. How important are clothes, even from a spiritual perspective? So we wear clothes out of what our sense of shame. That's the psychological reason, because we feel shame. Why do we feel shame? This is you know because what is shame in Arabic? Haya, haya, haya means life. As long as you feel shame, you have some spiritual life. You know, not like the nudist beaches, okay, that have become very pre prevalent, uh, prevalent nowadays. Destroying shame and the and making people shameless is one of the main main targets of shaitan. And so today, three percent of America, for example, up till 2015, right, sunbathed fully nude in the beaches. Uh, five percent topless at the beach. Okay, and so that's five percent of the women. Astaghfirullah, and have not participated yet. Twenty one percent. But you have between three and five percent that are willing to go naked. We were born, and you know the uh, the the Quraysh had similar beliefs. Uh, they used to go, they used to consider the most righteous act is to do tawaf around the Kaaba naked. So this is the problem: is that we were born naked, you know. So why should we, you know, have the and? But the fact is, Allah put in within human beings, and specifically human beings as an animal, that wears clothes to beautify themselves and to create identity for themselves and to to kind of like um, express themselves. Ya bani Adam, qad anzalna ilaykum libasan yuwari sawatikum warisha. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "O oh, children of Adam, you know." They took off your the clothes of your parents, so don't let them do that, right? And uh, oh, children of Adam, قد أنزلنا إليكم لباسا يواري سو أتكم وريشة. قد أنزلنا we sent down. Why? It's not that the clothes come down from anywhere, right? It, it, except in the sense that the rain comes down, they eat the plants, the animals eat the animals who eat the plants, and then. Because of that, anzalna works. Because then you kill these animals and make take their clothes. So we sent down something for you, so you can have clothes, which in this case would be the rain, which would then give life to the animals. Then they would give you the clothes. But also, anzalna could mean something within us from the other world, from the world where we came originally from, something there. Something to do with the ruh, something to do with the human spirituality, uh, that man wants to uh, look good and to express to to look uh, in a dignified way and to hide most importantly to hide your shame, to hide your sin, to hide your guilt. That man doesn't like to expose his sins and he doesn't like to expose his um, shame. So we sent down uh, clothes for you, so you may. Hide in your private parts, and rishan. It is an adornment for you. Walibas ut taqwa khair, and the libas, the wearing of taqwa, is khair. It is better for you. Dalik dalika min ayatillah. This is a sign for Allah. It should be a sign for Allah. The human beings, even though they're born like any other animal without clothes, but human beings want to clothe them, right? It, it, because we're not number one meant for the natural environment. Of the earth, like other animals, and we also have shame, and we also want to adorn ourselves. You know, let me explain it to you this way: uh, no animal, um, you know, decorates food. Only human beings decorate food, right? It, it, there's something about human beings, and you could say making things look aesthetic and pleasing and beautiful. Uh, which has a spiritual element to it. This is something very unique to human beings, and this is what you know. Shaitan wants to take away that humanity from us, take that away from us, and it begins with the moral corruption. And the moral corruption begins by making man shameless, right? Uh, where he, he, where the, his private parts are 
go into sexual anarchy like basically anar there's no discipline there's no rules there's no boundaries it's just plain anarchy ya bani adam la yaftinannakum ash-shaytan let not shaytan trick you kama akhraja abawaykum like he kicked, he got your parents out uh, kicked out min uh, al-jannah he got your parents out of jannah yanzi'u anhuma libasuhuma liyuriyahuma sawatihima and he what he did was he caused them to do something that would cause them to lose their clothes and this is what shaytan has done these beaches which is where the arsh of shaytan is according to one of the traditions of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya wa innahu yarawkum he sees you wa qabiluhu and his people and his tribes min haythu la tarawnahum where you cannot see them from but he sees you he sees you you can't see them he has an advantage point to see your weaknesses and to see your shame in terms of your sins and your lust and your desires and he sees this and he knows how to attack you so you better be careful inna ja'alna ash-shayatina awliya lil ladina la yu'minun indeed we make shaytan we let shaytan become the awliya of those people who have no belief who have no uh, faith wa idha fa'alu fahishatan qalu wajadna alayhi aba'ana wallahu amarana biha this is what they said when they went around the ka'bah when they do some fahisha going around the kaaba the sacred house of allah in in without clothes qalu wajadna alayhi aba'ana we found our forefathers doing this wallahu amara well and they say wallahu amarana amarana bi hadha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered this to us qul inna allaha la ya'muru bil fahsha say to them o prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam allah does not command you to do indecent deeds ataquluna ala allah ma la ta'lamun do you say upon allah the things that for which you have no knowledge qul amara rabbi bil qist but in fact allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered justice wa aqimu wujuhakum in the kulli masjid wa du'uhu mukhlisin lahu ad-din what allah has ordered is aqimu wujuhakum in the kulli masjid that you put your faces towards the masjid wa du'uhu mukhlisin and that you do dua to him you call upon him meaning it's a place to pray makka is a place to pray not a place to dance naked wa du'uhu mukhlisin lahu ad-din and call upon him in sincerity and din kama bada'akum ta'udun but it is true true kama bada'akum just as you start you came when you were first made you will return to allah in that way ja'tumuna kama khalaqnakum awwala marra you will go back to allah just as you were first created this is talking about not our first creation in this life but in the previous life where only alim al arwah only when the ruh was created then you will stand before allah again all alone no father no mother no sister no one will help you you'll be all alone when you were there with allah when allah took his covenant from you allas tu bi rabbikum man your lord at that time too you had no father no mother no sister so this is what it means this is what this is what is meant this is the actual essence of the spiritual aspect of it not that you go around the kaaba dancing naked فريقا هدا وفريقا حقت عليهم الضلالة. A group of them was guided, and a group of them it just became justified upon them to go in the wrong way. إنهم اتخذوا شياطين أولياء. They have taken شياطين as their friends من دون الله ويحسبون أنهم مهتدون. And they have calculated. They think that they're on the right path. يا بني آدم خذوا زينة زينتكم عند كل مسجد. Today, if you ever, today if you ever look at a uh christians going to a church right what do they do they wear the suits and the ties and they go they go dressed really well ya ya bani adam khudu zinatukum no when you go to the masjid go in and don't go in informally go formally go dressed go go for the occasion don't be informal at a masjid be formal it is a very a sacred place in in, in the kulli masjid and also about the quraish You know when we go to the uh, Masjid al-Haram when we go to Mecca we only wear two pieces of clothes. So the 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 some of them thought why even have two pieces of clothes? It's like we're already going like half naked so just even take off those. So this kind of like attitude was there. And then it became into these customs and traditions. Now if you remember the previous surah also talked about customs and traditions and the mythologies that I talked about. So this surah is also touching upon 
some aspects of that. Ya Bani Adama, khudu zinatakum in the kulli masjid. But take your garments, your best garments, your be beautiful garments. You can say the zina of your, amongst your garments. In the kulli masjidin, wa kulu wa shabu. And eat from it and drink from, eat and drink. Wala tusrifu. But don't cross the boundaries that Allah has put forward. In Allah la yuhibbul musrifin. You find these same exact words in the previous surah. In Allah la yuhibbul musrifin. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي And this same topic, who is it that made this halal or haram? Who is the one who's, who says this is halal or haram? This topic is being mentioned again in Sutul Araf, just as it was Sutul Anam. So this is just to show you the link between the two surahs. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَتْ لِعْبَادِهِ Who is the one that made it haram? Who says it's haram, uh, the zina, the beauty of the clothes, to wear them? Uh, for his servants, what min rizq and of the good things of the rizq. Qul hiya lil amanu fil hayat dunya. This is, these things are <coughs> for the believers in this life. Khalisatan yom al qiyama, and specifically and specially for the them uh, on the day of judgment. Kadalika nufasil al ayati li qomi yalamun. This is how we clarify you to our, you are signs for people that would know. So Allah subhanahu wa taala. There are a few things here. This does not negate the sacrifices and the hard work and the infaq and the sadaqah and everything you need to do to make Allah happy in the hereafter. But it but doesn't mean that you can't have a few clothes. It doesn't mean you should have like, uh, you know, 1,000 clothes and you should wear new clothes every day and never wear the clothes that you wore once. Not like that. That's not what the intent here. The intent here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to cover yourself. He wants you to adorn yourself. And you should do that in a mu'tadil, in a, in a balanced way. And also be sacrificing for Islam and also be doing the work of the deen and so on and so forth. كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies to you His signs so that you would know. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّهْ فَوَاهِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ See, Allah has made haram what? To be indecent. What is apparent thereof and what is hidden thereof. وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغِي بِغَيْرِ الْحَقْ And to do sin and rebellion without a just cause. وَأَن تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا Over there also you found those these basic being teachings, teachings in Sutul Anam about not doing shirk and being good to the parents. So this is here. وَالْإِثْمِ وَالْبَغِي Okay, any type of sin and transgression without any just cause on someone, and to shirk bil and Allah, and that you do shirk with Allah, ma lam you lanzil bihi sultan for which Allah subhanahu wa taala has sent down no authority for you to do. Wa anta kulu ala Allahi ma la taalamun. And worse than that is, you say things about Allah that you don't even know what you're saying. Wa li kulli ummatin ajal. Every ummah has its ajal. The people of Mecca, they're saying, where is that punishment? Where is that pun? Everything will come. Either you'll accept Islam, and when the victory comes, that has an ajal. And when, if you turn your back and the punishment comes, that will have an ajal. وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلْ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ السَّاعَةِ When that ajal comes, when that moment comes where you have no more time left and Allah is going to take action against you, okay? لا يؤخر at that time لا يستعجلون الساعة the hour of that moment will not be not be delayed in the least okay ولا يستقدمون nor will it come before its proper time يا بني آدم إما يأتي أنكم رسل منكم يقص عليكم آياتي right oh children of Adam إما يأتي أنكم رسل منكم and if a messenger comes to you, قُصُّ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ And he recites to you my signs, my ayat, my teachings. فَمَنِ اتَّقَى وَأَصْلَحَ And who has taqwa and makes things right for himself. فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ There will be no fear for him and no sadness for him. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا عَنْحَا أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ As for those people who belie our signs. And have istikbar, have proud, proudness. They're arrogant. They're not willing. To, they're arrogant. They're too arrogant to accept the truth. An haulai kas habun nar. They're the people of the fire. Hum fiha khalidun. In it, they will remain. 
فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ This is the same theme that was mentioned in the previous surah. افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ We read it many times. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ And who is more wrong in the, than the one who invents a lie against Allah أو كَذَّبَ بِآيَاتِ Or he makes a lie of his signs. أُولَئِكَ يُنَالُهُمْ نِصِيبُهُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ They are going to get a portion, their portion of the a book in this life. Right? They have, until they have time, they, they will be able to eat like the Muslims eat. They will be able to eat, drink, do everything that Allah has, whatever their nasib is, they're going to get it. Hatta idha ja'atum rusuluna yatawaffawnahum And until our messengers, the angels come to them to take their souls, qalu ayna ma kuntum tad'una min dunillah. Where are those things that used to be called other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قَالُوا ذَلُّ And they, then they will say, oh, we have gone astray. Right? They will admit that they've gone astray. ذَلُّ can also mean they have left us. وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ And they will bear witness over them, أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ In fact, they were people that rejected the truth. قَالُوا أُدْخُلُوا فِي أُمَمٍ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ فِي فِي النَّارِ Now go ahead, now you enter uh, like into, na in, into nations that have also now been put قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ that have come before you مِنَ الْجِنْ and ins amongst the jinns and ins then now you go into the fire like them, just like them. كُلَّمَا دَخَلَتْ أُمَّةٌ لَعَانَتْ أُخْتَهَا Every time an ummah came, a group of people came, they cursed the people before. Because of you, our forefathers, the ones that they used to follow and, 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 and show loyalty to, now they'll be like, oh, because of our forefathers, we've gone astray. So they will say what? Hatta idha daraku fiha jami'an. And then, when they're all there together in, in the hellfire now, qalat akh, آخرهم لأولاهم. The last of them will say to the first of them. ربنا هؤلاء يظلونا. Oh Allah, these are the people that led us astray. فأتهم عذاب ضعفا من النار. Let them get double the punishment. قال لكل الضعف. For all of you is double the punishment. Why? Because just as they led you astray, you led others after you astray. لكن لا ولكن لا تعلمون. But in fact, you don't know the truth. For everyone is double, but you don't know it because you've you've been doing the same thing that they've done. قالت أولاهم ل لأخرى ل لأخ أخراهم فما كان لكم علينا من فضل فزوق لذا بما كنتم تكسبون. They said, look, you have no. You know, you have no rights to like get less punishment than us. You did the same thing. Okay, for zukul alab. Now, pay, take, take the punishment bima kuntum taksibun for what you have, the wrong that you have committed. Okay? Inna ladina kafaru wa kad, inna ladina kadhabu bi ayatina wa stakbaru anha. So, those people who deny our signs and are arrogant. La tufattahu lahum abwaab as sama wa la yadhulun al jannah. Now, this is a little hint here what will happen on the Day of Judgment, but it, it, the doors of the heavens will not be opened for them, okay? So that they can enter into Jannah, Allah says. حَتَّى يَلِجُ الْجَمْلُ مِنَ سَمِّ الْخِيَاتِ Until, this is one of those, you know, uh, you say idioms. People say these, you can find this idiom in the Bible also, until the camel can go through the eye of the needle. Now we know that there's no way to make the eye of the needle to be as big as the camel, nor the camel as small as the needle of the eye, meaning something that's impossible to happen. Right? Hatta yalidu al-jamalu min sam al khiyat. Until the, uh, the, 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 the camel goes it through the eye of the needle, until that doesn't happen, they're going to be. Kadalika najazil mujrimin. This is how we repay the reward to those who are the wrongdoers, the criminals. لَهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ لَهُمْ مِنْ جَهَنَّمْ جَهَنَّمَ مِيهَادٍ And they have a place of rest for themselves in the hellfire. Okay? And uh, this is their place of rest. Or their, literally their bed. وَمِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ غَوَاشٍ And on top of them, 
coverings. And this is how we reward the wrongdoing and unjust people. Those people who believe and do good deeds, we're not going to put a burden or more than they can, than a soul can bear. They are the people of Jannah and in it they will remain. وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ uh, تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ uh, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here about the believers because sometimes believers, even though they're going to Jannah, but in dunya they had issues with one another. Okay? وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ We're going to remove on the Day of Judgment the غِل any, any grudges that they had against one another, they'll be washed away. من تحتهم أنهار and under them will be rivers that will be perpetually flowing in their residential gardens of Jannah. قالوا الحمد لله الذي حدانا لهذا and they will say الحمد لله for Allah who has guided us to this place. وما كنا نحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله and we couldn't have been guided had Allah subhanahu wa taala not guided us. لقد جاءت رسلنا رسل ربنا بالحق and our messengers came from our our messengers came from our Rabb. بالحق إن شود ونادوا أن تلكم الجنة ورثتموها بما كنتم تعلمون and it, there will be a call on the on in on in Jannah that look you have attained this Jannah because of what you used to do right we have to say we are going to enter Jannah only and only by the mercy of Allah and then we have to also maintain our good deeds but Allah will say, you did it because of your good deeds. We will, we have to say to ourselves that no, unless Allah wills, it cannot happen. It will only happen once Allah, we, we surrender to Allah fully and completely. Not our deeds don't take us to Jannah. But Allah will consider our deeds as part of, so you have your good deeds and then you need the rahmah of Allah over it. Now the ashabul jannah, ashabul nar. And قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدْنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّ So the people of the uh, Jannah will call out to the people of the Hellfire. Now these are different scenes of the hereafter that are being given. They say they will say وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدْنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّ Did you find what our, pro our Rabb promised us as true? فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدْتُمْ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّ فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ Sorry. The, the people of Jannah will say <coughs> to the people of the hellfire, قَدْ وَجَدْنَا We have already found وَعَدُنَا رَبَّ حَقَّ we, found, we found our part of the bargain was haq, it was true, and, and we, Allah's promise was true. هَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدْتُمْ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّ So you, they will ask the people of the hellfire, did you find for what you were doing the promises of Allah to be true? قَالُوا نَعَمْ They will say yes. فَأَزَّنَ مُعَزِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنَّ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ A mu'azzin will give a say, say, it will announce, لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ Allah's uh, mercy be removed, that's what la'na means, from the ظَالِمِينَ, from the wrongdoers. الَّذِينَ يَصَدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَيَبْغَوْنَ إِوَجَى يَبْغَوْنَهَا إِوَجَى Those people who stop people from the way of Allah and they seek Crookedness in it. وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ كَافِرُونَ Again, this topic about the denial of the hereafter. وَبَيْنَهُمَا hijab. Now, this is the A'raf. Now, between them, there will come this wall, which is also mentioned to Al-Hadid. Those that will be in it are saved. Those that will be out will be in punishment. And now, those that are on the wall are between these two. وَعَلَى الْأَعْرَافِ رِجَالٌ يَعْرِفُونَ كُلٌّ بِسِيمَاهُمْ And in this stage, the people that will be in the middle they will know everyone by their face. They will be able to tell about people who's, who's gloomy, who's bright, who's in heaven, who's in hell, who seems to be doing good, not good. You'll be able to tell. وَنَادَوْا أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ They will call out to the people of Jannah. They'll say, Salam upon you. لَمْ يَدْخُلُوهَا وَهُمْ يَتْمَعُونَ They have not entered into Jannah yet, but they're hoping that they will. وَإِذَا صُرِفَتْ أَبْصَارُهُمْ And when their eyes change, Direction, uh, to the people of the, and their eyes hit and see the people of the hellfire. قالوا, and they'll say, Oh Allah, don't make us amongst the people that are wrongdoing. I mean, 
ونابع أصحاب الأعراف رجال يعرفونهم بسيماهم and the people of A'raf that are on this wall that have equal good and bad deeds now they're nor here nor there and they're right on that wall that when the wall comes down those that are inside are in Rahmah those that are in outside are in the punishment and they're right on that wall between the Rahmah of Allah and the punishment of Allah رِجَالٌ يَعْرِفُونَ بِسِيمَاهُمْ when they recognize some of the people by their faces قَالُوا مَا أَغْنِ عَنْكُمْ جَمْعُكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ تستكبرون. You're gathering the things and things of dunya didn't benefit you at all. Imagine that day, everything you'd gathered, imagine if you have 20 billion, you know, 20 properties, 30 properties, 50 properties, and it's great for this life, but I mean, what is it in the hereafter? It's nothing. And because you were arrogant. You used to gather things on earth and it didn't save you and you were arrogant. So they will say, <coughs> say <coughs> to the hellfire, those people in paradise, you used to swear about them. You used to swear. Allah's mercy won't touch these people. Uh, and well, instead, Instead, they're the ones that are entering into Jannah and there's no fear for them and they have no sadness. The other opinion is that it is Allah saying this. Uh, so the, uh, Allah is the one asking, are these the ones you used to swear about that they won't have my mercy? No, they're in Jannah. وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أن تفيد علينا من الماء أو أو مما رزقكم الله. So now the people in the hellfire are going to call out to the people in Jannah. Okay, look, can you أفيد علينا? Can you just give us some water? أو مما رزقكم الله. Something Allah gave you of risk. قالوا إن إن الله حرمهما على الكافرين. No, no, we can't. Allah has made these two things haram for the both of these, the water and risk. Are both haram upon the kafirin, food from Jannah or anything from Jannah will not go to the hellfire. Those people who took their deen as play and jest, meaning they made Islam into, or they made their deen or the deen of Ibrahim into just uh, a, a time wasting thing and into a play thing. They didn't take it serious, the real teachings seriously. And then they changed the deen to fit into their life of this world and they were lost in the life of this world. Today we, for, we more ignore them is the word that Allah doesn't forget. Today we ignore them The way they forgot us They didn't make any, give us any value Didn't give the deen any value My remembrance any value And for what they used to of our signs They used to make arguments And just you know create problems for the believers لَقَدْ جِئْنَاهُمْ بِكِتَابٍ فَصَلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, we've already brought to you a book, فَصَلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ That will speak based upon knowledge. Over there, in the previous surah, you had the same uh, the same theme. هُدًا وَرَحْمًا also. لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ is for the huda guidance in rahma <coughs> for people to uh, who believe, okay? Now, this is about the punishment that the Prophet was saying, وسلم, that look, a punishment will come for you like it came for the previous people. Do you not think the same punishment can come to you that came to Nuh and Shu'aib and, and Salih and the other Prophets of Allah? So they said, oh no, we'll just wait till that punishment comes if this is true. Are they only waiting for that time to come? Is this what they want? That time to come where the, the affairs are all decided? يَوْمَ تَأْتِ التَّعْوِيلُهُ يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ نَسَوْا مِنْ قَبْلْ قَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُ رَبَّنَا بِالْحَقِّ فَهَلْ لَنَا مِنْ شُفَعَاءَ فَيَشْفَعُوا لَنَا أَوْ نُرِدْ أَوْ 
نرد فنعمل غير الذي كنا نعمل so يقولون and they will say الذين نسوه those people who forgot it or ignored it من قبل before قد جاءت رسل ربنا oh Allah we, you know the messengers already came to us in truth فهل لنا so is there a way for us now to have شفاء or فَيَشْفَعُوا لَنَا that will do shifa for us that will intercede on our behalf أو نردو so you can take us back نعمل غير الذي كنا نعمل so we can do actions other than the ones that we did قَدْ خَسِرَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَظَلَّ عَنْهُمْ they have gone to lost themselves وَظَلَّ عَنْهُمْ and they have put themselves in the wrong path وَمَا كَانْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ for what they have done the same theme came in the previous surah إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْأَرْشِ indeed Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْأَرْشِ and then he you could say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took control of the universe he sat on his throne or that he established himself on the throne. Now, of course, there's a lot of uh, theology that goes behind these verses, but I'm not going to go into ilmul kalam right now. يُكْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارِ يَطْلِبُهُ حَثِيثًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالنَّجُومَ مُسَخِرَاتٍ بِأَمْرِ Now, this ayah is very important. يُكْشَ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارِ He covers the night by the day. يَطْلِبُهُ حَثِيثًا It comes quickly. And was shams al qamar wa najul al musakhirat bi amri. And the sun and the moon and the stars are all by his command. Alalahu al khalq wa al amr. Now this is very important ayah. Alim al khalq is the world of creation. Allah created the world, this world of creation, in six days. Everything in this world, including time and space, everything takes time. Everything takes space, right? And Amr, Alim al-Amr is the world of the angels, where there's no element of time doesn't exist. The the world of angel exists, the Alim al-Ghayb exists. Alim, in Alim al-Ghayb, everything is without time. There's no time in the sense of sequential time as we understand it as humans. This is why Maliki Yawm al-Deen, Master of the Day of Judgment, that other world is not recognized in terms of time but rather as a, an entire phase. Then Allah says about it, how much time it will have. But uh, like it'll be like 50,000 years, right? But that's just to give you an idea. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with an alim al-amr, there's no time as such. But we are, but our creation has time in it. So Allah, and this is how Shaulillah Muhaddas Dilmi Rahmatullah interpreted this ayah. Allah lahu al-khalq wal-amr, tabarak Allahu rabbul alameen, Allah is the one full of baraka, Rabbul Alameen. Udu'u Rabbakum tadarra wa khufya Call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you're broken down or in humbly wa khufya and in secrecy. Innahu la yuhibbul mu'tadeen Allah doesn't love those people who cross boundaries. Wa la tufsidu al-ardi ba'da islahi wa du'u khufa wa tab'a Don't cause fitna in the world, chaos in the world after we after things have been made right. Wa du'u hu khufa wa tab'a Call him in fear and in hope. Inna rahmat Allahi qareebu min al-muhsineen. Indeed, Allah's rahma is near the muhsineen, the people that try to do things perfectly. Huwa alladhi yursilu riyaha bushram bayna yadayhi rahma. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sends the sky, the wind, as a good tiding. You know, for the if you have crops and you're waiting for rain and the rain comes, it comes as a good news. Ida aqalat sahaban. When the, uh, when the, um, when the, Clouds they gather together. Thiqalan nus nus suknahu balda balda tan may. So aqalat sahaban. So the sahab the clouds they move. Thiqalan in heavy. Suknahu balda tan may. Tan fa anzalna bihi ma an fa akhrajna bihi min kulli thamarat. And then the you know the then Allah sends down the rain, and then from there comes every fruit and vegetation. كذلك نخرج الموتى. This is how we will bring you know how this dead land becomes living land because of the rain. This process is Allah saying this is how we will take. كذلك نخرج الموتى لعلكم تذكرون. This is how we will take the dead out of the land, meaning the human beings on the day of judgment. وَالْبَلْدَةُ الطَّيِّبِ أَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُهُ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّي And a good land, 
a طيب land, a wholesome land, you know, it brings out its vegetation and plantation, uh, its its harvest by the will of Allah. الذين والذين خبث خبث لا يخرج إلا نكدا. And as for the land that is خبث uh, is dirty, it brings out nothing but a little little here and there, and that's it. كذلك نصرف الآيات لقوم يشكرون. This is how we make our signs clear for you, so you will be a people that thank. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِي And remember when Musa alayhi salatu, uh, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was sent to his people, he said, يَا قَوْمِ O my people, أَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَشْبَ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِي You have no divine other than him. إِنَّنِي أَخَافُ وَعَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ so over here, some prophets are going to be mentioned. Prophet Nuh is going to be mentioned. Prophet Shuaib is going to be mentioned. Prophet Salih is going to be mentioned. Uh, Prophet uh, Lut is, I think I mentioned him. Okay. Um, so these prophets are going to be mentioned. Why are they going to be mentioned? These prophets, first of all, the, the, the social crimes, let's look at that first. So there is the shirk aspect. But then after shirk, after shirk, after shirk, it begins to seep into the fitra of the people, the nature of the people, and then they begin to do have social corruption. The, the societies get corrupt. So in the case of Musa, والسلام, who is not mentioned here, you have political corruption. In the case of Shuaib, والسلام, who is mentioned here, you have financial corruption. In the case of Lut, والسلام, who is also mentioned here, you have moral corruption. So now in the beginning, you know, in the time of Nuh, والسلام, it was a matter of what? Not not believing in one Allah. <coughs> then again, in the case of Ibrahim والسلام, who's mentioned in the previous surah, uh, it was a matter of not believing one Allah. Now after this, now it's beginning to uh, affect other aspects of human uh, human behavior. And, uh, and, and so now that they are not on Tawheed, they're not on oneness, now there, it's it's very easy because the oneness, the belief in belief in oneness of Allah makes your fitrah strong, your human nature strong, your disposition strong, your belief in the hereafter. All that keeps your human nature intact. When that goes away, and as you know, this is one of the main themes of this surah: those who don't believe in the akhirah, uh, you know, they they don't uh, th uh, those people who don't believe in the akhirah, they do shirk. So these things are interrelated. You don't believe in the hereafter, then you'll end up doing shirk which means then your personality won't be as nowadays psychologists like to call it, you know, self-actualization, individuation, you know, basically you're one organic whole human being, you're one organic. But if you, if that can only happen if there's one God. Um, but I will talk about that at some other point, but what I want to talk about today is that because historically there's this, so at first the prophets came bringing in Tawheed, and then, but, but then they kept, the effects kept getting worse. Right, and so now you have, as we'll study, Prophet Lut والسلام, who has the moral corruption, and then you have Shuaib والسلام, who has the financial corruption, and then you have the corruption in Tawheed there with uh, Prophet Nuh والسلام, right? And so um, the other thing that's important here, because Quraysh is being talked to, but this is interesting, and that is that we generally think Ibrahim والسلام, had only two wives. Uh, she didn't. She ha he. I mean, he, Prophet Ibrahim didn't only have two wives. He had more than two wives, and um, Prophet Shuaib uh, in Madian, uh, he was uh, Qantura. I think her name was Qantura. That was one of the wives of Ibrahim, from which another prophet was. And so this is being demonstrated to them. The other thing that's important here is the prophets that are being. Uh, uh, discussed here, uh, most of all of them are, uh, like for example, uh, 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 some of these prophets are Arabian prophets, okay? So for example, you have Prophet Salih, you also have Shu'ayb, these are close to Arabia. So these are prophets the Arabs have heard of or knew about at, somewhat, uh, at some level, okay? And so, uh, inshallah, let's uh, begin. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan. This is what Nuh said, you know, قَالَ مَلَعُ And the leaders of that nation مِنْ قَوْمِهِ They said, إِنَّا لَنَرَاكَ فِي ظَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Oh Musa, uh, oh Nuh, we find you in total law, uh, way, error way. You're making a boat in the middle of a desert. It's never going to be so much rain that you're going to need a boat. That's crazy. You're the one that's gone crazy. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لَيْسَ لِي بِظَلَالَ 
Oh my people, there's not ضلاله. wrongdoing is not on my part. ولكن رسول من رب العالمين. I'm just a رسول from رب العالمين. I just conveyed to you the message that رب العالمين gave me. وأبلغكم رسالات ربي وأنزهكم وأعلم من الله ما لا تعلمون. أبلغكم. Did I convey to you the message of my Rabb? Did I convey it or not? وأنصحكم. Did I not give you sincere advice? وعلم علم وعلم من الله ما لا تعلمون. I was taught things and I knew things from Allah that you did not know. Specifically, that the flood will be coming. وَأَجِبْتُمْ أَنْ جَاءَكُمْ ذِكْرٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Then did you wonder, right? Rasulullah has come. Meaning, messengers have been coming. You should have been expecting a messenger to come. And now a messenger is here. You have to respond to him. Right? أَجِبْتُمْ أَنْ جَاءَكُمْ ذِكْرٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Are you like amazed that Allah sent a dhikr to you, a reminder to you? Allah is choosing you for this? ألا رجل منكم a man amongst you ولينذركم ل ل وتتك ولتتكو لعلكم ترحمون so that he will warn you and tell you to have taqwa لعلكم ترحمون so you you will be shown mercy on the day of judgment or you or you think this is you know something عجيب something strange فكذبوه so they they denied Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam wa anjaynahu wa alladhina ma'ahu fil fulk so we saved him and the people that were with him in that ship wa aghrakna alladhina kathabu bi ayatina and aghrakna alladhina kanu bi ayatina and we drowned the people who denied our signs annahum kanu qawman ameen they are a people that are blind completely ila adi akhahum huda and then ala ad so uh, to Ad, we sent their brother Hud. Ila Ad in Akhahum Huda. Allah ya qomi Abdullah. And remember, oh, when he said, "Oh my people, worship Allah, become slaves of Allah." Malakum min ilahin ghairi. You have no divine author, divine other than Him. Afala ta 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 Do you not? Will you not then have taqwa? Allah mala uladina ka ka kafaru min qomi inna la naraka fi. سفاحة وإن لنز إن لذنك من الكاذبين. And they said to the Prophet of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that we see you as a crazy person and we see you that you've gone completely astray. قال يا قوم ليس بي سفاحة ولكن ني رسول رسول من رب العالمين. He will say, Oh my people, it's not that I've become stupid. Okay, it's that I'm the messenger of Allah and this is what's bothering you. أبلغكم أبلغكم رسالات ربي وأنا مع أنا لكم ناس هن أمين. I am just conveying you to the message of my رب, but I'm just a sincere advisor to you. أجبتم أن جاءكم ذكر من ربكم على رجل رجل منكم لينذركم. Are you are you like surprised? Are you like what's wrong with you? أجبتم أن جاءكم ذكر that they they you are you find it amazing that ذكر has come to you من ربكم على رجل من رجل منكم a man amongst you has been given this message لينذركم to warn you وذكروا إذ جعلناكم خلفاء and remember when we made amongst you خلفاء من بعد قوم نوح what after the prophet نوح عليه الصلاة والسلام these people they were they were they had great civilizations Right, and then wazadakum fil khalki bastatan, and we created you big and large. Wazkur ala illahi la alakum tuflihun, and remember the favors of Allah subhanahu wa taala, so that you will have success. Qalu ajatna li ni nabud Allah wahdahu wa nazar ma kanu yabudu abana. They they said. To the prophets of Allah, أجئتنا لنعبد الله. Do you want us to worship Allah وحده who is all alone ونزر نزر ونزر ما كان يعبد ونزر and they forsake ما كانوا يعبد أبائنا and what used to worship their forefathers. فإننا بما تعيدنا 
in kunta min as-salihin for in fa'tina so bring to us bima ta'iduna what you promise with the promises you're making okay bring it to us in kunta min as-sadiqin if you're truly truthful amongst the truthful you know bring that punishment you want to you want to bring a punishment and you're like go ahead bring that punishment <coughs> قَالَ قَدْ وَقَعَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ رِجْسٌ وَغَضَبٌ So then, Suhud alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, قَدْ وَقَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ رِجْسٌ وَغَضَبٌ Look, you've already earned Allah's ghadab and His anger, okay, and rids. أَتُجَادُلُونَ نِي فِي السَّمَاءِ سَمَّيْتُهَا Are you going to argue me about these things that you made, that you name yourself, that you worship now? أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمْ You and your forefathers مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانِ Allah has sent down no authority regarding this. فَانْتَظِرْ فَانْتَظِرُوا So you wait in the مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُنْتَظِرِينَ I'm also waiting with you. وَالنَّجَّيْنَا وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا and we saved those that were with him and uh, birahma, with mercy. Minna, minna. Waqata'na dabiri ladina kathabu bi ayatina. And we cut, we cut out that portion of people that were denying our signs. Wama kanu mu'minin. And they were not amongst the believers. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِلَى ثَمُودِ And now Samud. Thamud is going to be mentioned. إِلَى ثَمُودِ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا So Salihah is now being mentioned. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ He said, Oh, people worship Allah. مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَاهٍ غَيْرِ You have no divine other than Him. No one to worship other than Him. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ بَيِّنَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ A clear sign has come to you from your Lord. هَذِهِ نَاقَةُ اللَّهِ This she camel, which everyone witnessed her coming out of stone, being given birth. So, هذه ناقة الله لكم آية. He said, "This she camel for you is a sign. وذروها تأكل في تأكل في الأرض. Leave her alone. Let her eat from the earth. لا لا تسوموها لا تمس لا تمسوها بسوء. And don't touch her with any evil intent." فَأَخَذْكُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Because if you did that, a painful punishment would come to you. وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ خُلَفَاءً مِنْ بَعْدِ And remember when the khulafa were made leaders after وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ خُلَفَاءً مِنْ بَعْدِ آد And remember even after آد you were made the khulafa on earth. وَبَوَّأَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And we made you settle on earth. تَتَّخِذُوا مِنْ سُهُولِهِمَا قُصُورًا and what you would do is you would take their plain, you know where the plains are, you would take that as your castles. And you took your mountains as the houses. Uh, sorry. And remember the favors of Allah and do not go beyond, do not go beyond bounds. Fil ard on earth mufsidin like transgressors. قال ملا الذين استكبروا من قوبه للذين ضعفوا لمن آمن منهم تعلمون أن صالح المرسل من من ربي قالوا إن بما أرسلتم به مؤمنين قال ملا الذين استكبروا and the leaders who had had كبرن them من قومه from his people للذي للذين استضعفوا لمن آمن منهم. As for the people who, <coughs> so the elite said to the weak people, تعلمون أن صالح مرسل من ربي. Hey, do you know this guy says he's a sent from Allah? قالوا إن بما أرسلنا به مؤمنون. Say no, we definitely believe in believe in إن إن ب بما أرسلنا. Indeed, we what we have been sent with, we definitely believe in it. قال الذين استكبروا إن 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 بالذي آمنتم به كافرين. and then the people that were elite they said well whatever you believe in it we reject whatever you believe in it. okay this could have been done out of stubbornness just like the Quraysh was. 
فأغرقوا أغر فعرقوا ناقة ناقة. So they killed the she camel, the one that was assigned for them. وأتوا أن أمر ربهم. So they killed the she camel and they were completely stubborn about the about the commandment of Allah going against it. وقالوا يا صالح اعتنا بما تعيدنا. Come on, bring out that promise you said. We killed the camel. Now bring that promise. إن كنت من المرسلين. If you are truly a messenger of God. فأخذتهم الرجفة. So a earthquake took them. فأصبحوا في دارهم جاثمين. And they found themselves fallen on the ground after that. They were totally destroyed. نتولى عنهم قال يا قومي لقد أبلغتكم رسالة ربي ونصحت لكم ولكن لا تحب الناس هم. فتولى عنهم. So he turned away. قال يا قومي after he witnessed this that he turned away and he said you know يا قومي إن إني يا قوم لقد أبلغتكم رسالتي. Look guys I conveyed my message to you from my Rabb. ونصحت لكم and I gave you نصيحة ولكن لا تحب الناصحين but the fact is you don't love people that give you advice give you sincere if somebody gives you sincere advice you're not for that you're pretty much against that so this juz now will end with لوط عليه الصلاة والسلام basically ولوط إذ قال لقومي تأتون فاهشة ما سبقكم بها أحد من العالمين this time I'm not going to talk about homosexuality but I definitely want to talk about it and some very interesting things about that I want to talk about in some little bit of detail and Lut when is قال لقومي when he said to his people تأتون فاهشة do you come to people with immodesty ما سبقكم بها من أحد with the uh, تأتون, uh, the, what you're doing no other people before you have done من العالمين of all humanity إنكم تأتون رجال شحوة you come to mankind with شحوة with lust من دون النساء other than other than women بل أنتم قوم مصرفون but the fact is that you are a nation who's gone far beyond the bounds وما كان جواب قومه they had no answer to what he was saying what Lut was saying إلا أن قالوا except that they said أخرجوهم take these people out من قريتكم from your from your village إنهم أناس يتطهرون they are these are just you know they say these are these are the people that are always purifying themselves is is one you know they think of themselves as pure you know actually it's not in it's it's like a it's a it's there it's a way of mocking them إنهم أناس يتطهر oh they think they're so pure they think they're so good kick them out so this type of uh, attitude of uh, kick them out, uh, you can find that in the studies in terms of violence. And, and, and they think they're so pure, kick them out. We will be talking about homosexuality, inshallah, in one of the other surahs that talks about Prophet Lut We saved him and his family except his wife who stayed behind, okay, with the wrongdoers. وَأَمْتَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مَطَرًا And, you know, we set down sto a rain of stones upon them. فَانْزُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Now, what is the point of all these? This is what happens when you leave Tawheed. You run into these serious problems in society. And number two, uh, this is what happens. This is what Mecca is being warned against. That, you know, these people also said, just bring us the punishment. And then look what happened to them. They were sleeping or they were doing qalula and they just were destroyed. And here are examples of prophets in your own area in this place where Hud was. Right there. These are Arabian prophets. Right? And uh, so, وَأَمْتَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مَطَرًا فَانْزُلْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ وَإِلَى مَدِيًا Okay, so, uh, sorry, uh, we have to do Shu'ayb. Now, Shu'ayb is interesting because... He is not from Bani Israel. He's from one of the other wives of Ibrahim والسلام, which I'll talk about at another time also. But Shu'ayb, uh, he says he's from Madian. وَإِلَى مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا And to Madian, his brother Shu'ayb. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِ He said, Shu'ayb said, اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ Worship Allah مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِ You have no, no God other than Allah. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ بَيِّنَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ over here, I also want to mention, because Ibrahim is already mentioned, right? So these Arab prophets and pre-Abrahamic -er, pre prophets and and 
prophets that are around that time of Ibrahim and uh, those that are pre-Abrahamic prophets, Ab prophets before Musa والسلام, you could say, are being mentioned. Pre-Musa prophets, actually. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ بَيِّنَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ A clear sign from Allah has already come to you. فَأَوْفُ الْكَيْلَ وَالْمِيزَانِ So complete the 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 mizan the, the and the weight and kayla the measure so awful kayla wal mizana wa la tabkhasu nas and don't take away things from the people their ashya ashya'ahum their things wa la tufsidu fil ardi ba'da islahiha and don't make corruption in the world after things have been set right dhalikum khairul lakum in kuntum mu'minin this is best for you if you did but no wa la wa la taqta'u bi kulli kulli sirat and don't sit on every path to aduna, uh, 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 threatening people. And taking people out of the path of Allah. Man amana bihi wa tabghawna anha iwaja. Seeking, making, seeking to make things wrong and crooked. Wadhkuru id kuntum qalilan fakathrakum. Remember when you were few, then Allah made you many. فَانْذُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُفْسِدِينَ See what was the result of the people that caused fasad in the world. وَإِنْ كَانَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ آمَنُوا بِالَّذِي أُرْسِلْتُمْ بِهِ وَطَائِفَةٌ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا فَاسْبِرُوا حَتَّى يَحْكُمُ اللَّهُ بَيْنَنَا وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ now this is the end, you could say, uh, concluding remarks about prophets coming and not believing in the prophets, or prophets coming and believing in the prophets, now it's coming to back, back to the prophet and his companions. In كَانَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ آمِنُوا If there is a group amongst you that does believe, وَالَّذِي أُرْسِلْتُ بِهِ By the one whom I have sent. وَطَائِفَةٌ لَمْ And a group of the, uh, you don't believe. فَاسْبِرْ Then have sabr. حَتَّى يَحْكُمُ اللَّهُ بَيْنَنَا Until Allah decides between us. وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of the judges. Meaning, the punishment that is promised is going to come. It just, there's an ajal, there's an appointed time. If within that time you don't believe, then you're done with. You'll be, you'll be uh, removed from earth the way the previous nations were removed. Like the people of Lut and Shu'ayb and so on and so forth. But if you believe, then that will be good for you, and then then you know then you will become an ummah, and you will do the functions that Allah subhanahu wa taala has entrusted the ummah to do. So inshallah, we end here today, and we will continue inshallah with the next juz um, very soon. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Make sure to subscribe today, and make sure you like, and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. أشهد أن لا 